We are coming to you from Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg, where tonight Comcast Sportsnet presents White Sox Baseball. It's Jose Abreu, Bobby Garcia, Melky Cabrera and the Sox as they get set to butt heads with Evan Longoria and the surprising Tampa Bay Rays. Hi, everybody, and welcome. I'm Ken Harrelson with Steve Stone as we get set to bring you game two of this three-game setting, game two of this five-game road trip. We'll have three here, finish it off with two in Pittsburgh. So if you missed the opener last night, you didn't miss anything. It was ugly. It was a bad game. We did not deserve to win it. We gave them three wins, and we got beat 7-5. to five, But let's look forward to tonight. And we've got a guy who's been hitting the ball out of the ballpark. Jose Abreu has gotten red hot, and he's always been red hot against these Tampa Bay Rays. We'll take a look at Abreu and realize that he got the Sox very close last night. Unfortunately, not quite close enough. This against Dallas Keuchel, that gets the Sox back in it. Then he homered for the second time in as many days before last night. Getting the Sox within 6-5, to five, taking his home run right down the line. And Abreu is hitting 400 lifetime against this ball club, so hopefully more of the same tonight. But he's got a tough customer. Well, tomorrow these Rays are going to be facing our ace, Chris Sale, and tonight we're facing their ace. Chris Archer going to the mound, and he's just 7-4, and four, which is good, but not as good as it could be. His ERA is in the ones. The last three starts, 2-0. Oh. .39 ERA. 38 strikeouts and no walks. First pitcher in the modern era. They have 10-plus strikeouts and three straight starts and not walk anybody. So look at the ranks in the American League. He's second in ERA. He's second in strikeouts. Opponent's batting average. He's tied for second. And whip, he's tied for first. The current AL player of the week. Archer has a great slider. He's got a good fastball, and right now he's throwing the ball as well as he's throwing it in his career. So we've got a tough one on the mound today. And on the bump for us will be a man who is looking for some consistency, something better, Jeff Samarja. So sit back, relax, and strap it down. White Sox baseball coming your way.
Sportsnet is brought to you in part by your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. Through it all. Audi. Truth in engineering. Xfinity. Your home for the most live sports. And by Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealer. Toyota. Let's go places. Welcome back to St. Petersburg where... These Rays are just a game in back of New York, and let's take a look at how Mark Parent is going to line up our Sox for the game this afternoon. It's going to be J.B. Shuck leading it off, and Alexi Ramirez in a two-spot with Jose Abreu, the D.H., and Adam LaRoche at first. Abasil Garcia in right field, Melky Cabrera in left, Gordon Beckham at third, Carlos Sanchez at second, and Giovanni Soto behind the plate. The defense, and now they'll line up behind Chris Archer. It's DeJesus, Kiermaier, and Sousa in the outfield with Longoria, Cabrera, Franklin, and Elmore in the infield. Kurt Casale behind the plate, and our Lexus for swing perfection starting pitcher is Chris Archer. He's been brilliant. On for the 14th time, his ERA 184, 108 strikeouts in 83 innings, and we're ready to play baseball. I'm ready to turn it over to my play-by-play partner, Ken Harrells. Hi, Steve. Thank you. And once again, good evening, everyone, and welcome to White Sox Baseball right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Should be a good one. And hopefully, not too far from here, should be another good one with the Blackhawks. And before we show you our picks to click you at home, select yours as J.B. Shuck gets set to lead it off. And takes first pitch strike. Archer has a curveball and a slider, but his slider is his favorite pitch. It's his best pitch next to the fastball. And the count quickly 0 and 2. Shuck hitting at 288. Sox come in hitting at 242 as a team with a 4.17 team ERA. JB trying to get his wits together with an 0-2 count. Foul tip. And here at Tropicana Field, 315 down the left field line, 322 down the right field line, 370 in the gaps, and 404 straightaway center. Yeah, I was talking with some raised people. They said the slide of his has been absolutely devastating. When you got a whip under one, you know something's working for you. And whip is walks and hits the innings pitched. And Archer hasn't walked a batter his last 23 innings. So he works quickly, gets the ball over the plate, and has magnificent stuff. As dribble. Let's take a look at the last three starts, and you can see why he's doing what he's doing. He's 2 0 is ERA 0 .39 in 23 innings, his 14 hits. Zero walks. First pitcher in modern era to afford 10 plus strikeouts and no walks in three consecutive starts and then those big 38 strikeouts. So he showed a lot of promise as a youngster, bouncing around through a couple of organizations before finding a home here, and he's been brilliant. And you gotta keep going back. As Alexei. To the pitching coach. Jim Hickey has done just a terrific job. He has. He molding really has. this guy because he yeah. came over with a lot of talent but hadn't really found himself yet. Yeah, there's two of the better pitching coaches in the game in this ballpark tonight. Our Don Cooper. And there's Jim Hickey. Looks like Souza hurt his knee as he came over. It is no play. Obviously, this would have been an extraordinary catch. It's a great effort. Realizing that. The wall was coming up. He jammed the knee into that wall. Fortunately, the padding probably saved him. Cracked kneecap. Twenty-one to count. Yeah, that's that's the thing about coaches. You might be floundering around as a young prospect, and obviously you have some talent. But you probably wouldn't have been signed, whether it be a hitter or a pitcher. And all of a sudden, you get with one that flips the light switch on. Okay. 
Sure makes it a little, a little nicer for the GM and also the manager when you've got a pitching coach like that. You know you can bring just about anybody in. There's a shot base hit. All right, with one out, one on, let's check out our picks to click tonight. Jim Angio, director and crew, went with Lexi. Steve's going with JB. And Mike Mazza, Kenny Wiz, Tom Eichstead, Pete Catazone, Laura Arenas, Mary Weiss, Nick Bristow, Tom Sheridan, Rob Boaz. We're going to go with Gordon Backham. Well, the crew has got to stop picking after the first at bat because I just don't think that's fair. You don't. No. I wonder why they have 12. So here is Abreu. That ball back to the backstop. Most unusual control problems early in this one. First ball, he fell behind three and one on Ramirez. That time he threw one by Casali. He was a pretty good defensive catcher, and that's a wild pitch. That's his fifth wild pitch, and it scooted Ramirez in a scoring position. Be nice to break on top early for Jeff Samardi. Okay, you two for four last night with a two-run homer. Abreu, for whatever reason, has always loved to hit against these Rays. Hitting 400 in eight games, driven in 15 runs total. That's a lot of production in a very short period of time. And that's back through the middle, and it's going to give us a run. So Abreu continues. This. Mike Leary, let's take another look at that swing right there. That just goes to show you. When he gets two strikes, one reason he's such a good two strike hitter is right here, Steve. He doesn't try to do too much. No, and I think that he started that coming in for whatever reason. We knew that he was a slugger. We didn't realize just how good a hitter he was. And that pitch was low and away, just about out of the zone. And yet he was able to take it right back up the middle, driving in his 40th run of the year, and the Sox. Break out on top against one of the league's best. And that pitch outside to Adam, hitting at 241, eight homers and 24 knocked in. Yeah, you get a lot of strong right handed hitters on that same pitch right there. They're going to pull off the ball if they swing and miss, and it's going to be a big swing. And he, all he did was just nice and easy. That's why. Outside of a very good hitter, he's always going to be a run producer. Because in situations like that, he doesn't try to hit the ball out of the park. 40 RBIs. Pull the string on him right there. And the count one and two. Come up with a run on the RBI single by Jose Abreu after half inning of play as our guys won and their guys coming to bat.
leading it off with Joey Butler, who had three hits last night. Dennis Longoria, DeJesus, Sousa Jr., along with Cabrera, Elmore, Franklin, and Casale. The defense, and on the lineup behind Jeff Samarja, left to right, it's Cabrera, Shuck, and Garcia in the infield. Beckham, Ramirez, Sanchez, and LaRoche. Giovanni Soto behind the plate, and our Lexus Pursuing Perfection starting pitcher is Jeff Samarja, looking for some consistency. On for his 13th start, his ERA just, just under five, and he's 4-4 four and four this year. So here's the center fielder, Kevin Kiermaier, hitting at 245. And that pitch misses low and away. Kiermaier, last year, 263, 10 homers, and drove in 35. And Kiermaier last night. Pinch hit in the sixth inning, knocked in a run, and he got another base hit in the eighth. And that's trouble. That might be three. That's his fifth triple. And for whatever reason, the left-handers have really been bothering Jeff this year. They've hit him very well, and this is a good pitch. On Renard's pitch tracks, it's a low fastball on the outer portion of the plate, and Kiermaier with good speed. It's a rocket up the gap, and he's 90 feet away from tying up this Wago. Well, Don Cooper's got a, a theory on that pitch right there. Low and away fastballs to decent left handed hitters, and that pitcher's going to do a lot of backing up. A lot of backing up bases. I always felt that unless you've established the inside part of the plate, that outside part of the plate is not going to help you all that much, especially when you get guys to the scouting report say, you know, this guy likes to go away. He would just as soon go away. You got to push him back off the plate or establish that inside. Joy Butler. Good swing. He had three hits last night, a couple of RBIs, and a run scored. What would your former partner in the Hall of Famer Don Drysdale have done if you couldn't push people back off the plate? Because that was well, he would have been he would have <laughs> been in television. <laughs> it was one of the staples of his arsenal. Well, you know Don Drysdale, as he gets him big out, one down, but Drysdale. I faced him, you know, I faced him in spring training a lot. I faced him in the All-Star game. Don was not as a real hard thrower. He had a good fastball, don't get me wrong, because of movement. But what you had to worry about was Mickey Mantle put it the best. He says, you've got to hit him before he hits you. That's a problem. Yeah. The intimidation factor of the game these days isn't even near the same as it once was. Not even close. But you still have to establish inside. And that doesn't mean drilling guys. Nope. Now, if you're going to pitch inside and you're going to establish that fastball, you're going to hit some guys, but it's not going to be on purpose. And hitters know when they're being hit on purpose and when they're not, for the most part, 98% of the time. Well, a hitter can look at a pitcher's eyes and see where he's aligning the pitch more times than not and have a pretty good idea where it's going to go. Well, the first time I ever faced Don Drysdale in spring training, I was a kid coming off a big year in the Eastern League. And and I'd heard all these stories and read all these stories about him in the sporting news, which was the Bible, baseball Bible back in those days. And I had heard that he hit guys, a lot of them. And sure enough, I was hitting cleanup. Ed Charles was the third hitter in the bottom of the first inning. And he hit Ed right in the neck. And I'm in the on deck circle. I'm 19 years old. And I'm saying, oh my God, all those stories are true. <laughs> I'll get the job done and a base hit. He's going to give it a go. Longoria. And he comes off the bag and they get him. I think. Well, Longoria is saying that he was able to retouch with his left arm. And I think C.B. Buckner is saying he, he got gone. you. Now, the question is, they're going to take a look at it. The reason is he undoubtedly overslid the bag. But instead of going back with his right arm, 
he went back with his left. Now he overslides the bag. The tag is waiting for him. And he's saying he got in before the tag of Sanchez. C.B. Buckner said, nope, you did not. But he couldn't hook the bag. Then he goes back with the left arm. That angle you can't really tell because you're obscured by Carlos. Sanchez. So now, Kevin Cash wants a review. So Dale Scott, crew chief, home plate umpire. Usually when you get a guy like a, a Longoria or a Derek Jeter or a George Brett or a Robin Ventura when he played, if they if they give you give an umpire a beef, most of the time they were right. Now some guys, we got a couple in our club, every time there's a close play, they want to review on it, even though the guy was out. <laughs> Well, we shall see if there's definitive proof. The call on the field is he's out. The run's going to score anyway. So that's going to be RBA number 27 for Longoria. And with Carlos, he put the glove there. Longoria came in with the left arm, split the middle of the body of Sanchez, and he says that he got in. They're showing it on the scoreboard here at the prop. And he called him out. Well, the angle they had on the scoreboard here showed him safe. That's the reason you were hearing that noise in the background. <laughs> yes. So they lose their review process. Very safe. Looked like it. Anyway, we'll take it. And here's. David De Jesus out of Wheaton, Illinois. David at 301, five homers. He's driven in 20, as we talked about him last night. He's always played well against us. In fact, he's been just a good player, period, for whatever team he was on. He's going to make some contact, and that's one of the things he does well. He's actually hitting the ball better out of the park this year than he has in years past. But he's been a solid player always and he gives you versatility in the outfield. The one thing that he hasn't done which is somewhat surprising is. He's not a prolific base stealer. And he's not particularly good at. It. Three and all the count. And there's ball four. And talking about umpires, we had an umpire behind the plate last night. May have been the best umpire game we have seen, balls and strikes, all year long. I we couldn't tell if he missed a pitch the whole game. No, Gabe that, Morales. It was Gabe Morales and Dale Scott's the crew chief behind the plate. Dan Iasoni is at first. CB Buckner is at second. And the aforementioned Gabe Morales is at third. And I thought. That was a brilliant job. It was. I don't think anybody looked back all night to question any one of his calls. And you know, like everything else, you're going to get a whole lot of close calls during the course of your evening. Not only do you get a lot of close calls, but in the case of the Tampa Ball Club, they use five pitchers. That's five different slants you have to look at. Sox used three pitchers. So through eight pitchers, he still did a great job. Well, the old saying is if you don't notice them, they've done a good job. And I guarantee you, there were a little over 13,000 last night, almost 13.5. Nobody noticed Gabe Morales. Just a small lead by the Hastings. Long set by Jeff. So we get one in the top of the first. They come right back with one in the bottom of the first. Lead off triple by Kevin Kiermeyer. RBI single by Longoria, and we're tied at one.
Just a reminder, as you enjoy a cold one, to look forward to Miller time later in the game, brought to you by Miller Lite. One one tie. Top of the second inning, it'll be Avi, Melky, and Beckham. Avi celebrated his 24th birthday yesterday. He truly is getting old. You and I are getting younger, however. He's getting old. Oh my goodness, I'll tell you. 24 years old. With a bundle of skills at 24 years old. Yeah, when you bundle him up, what they're doing today with a lot of products, you bundle his size, his speed, his arm, his power. Yeah, that's a bundle of talent. That's, that's, a, that's a bundle of talent. Any which way you look at it. And hopefully it all comes to fruition in that uniform he's wearing today. Well, I don't think he's going to be out of that uniform for a very long time, knock on wood. That's probably the one area of luck you're not going to be able to control, and that is the injury. Right. Bug. There's some guys that can't stay away from it, and other guys, they never run into it. One out. Here's the archer slider, and this is why it's so difficult to hit. It's late breaking, and everybody you talk to says the same thing. Your eye identifies a fastball. It comes in, it's in the strike zone. You go to swing at it, it disappears out of the zone. Late breaking and very quick. Late breaking is the key. That's the key right there. If, if a guy does not have a late breaking slider, he's got just a normal slider. He can still get you out with it, but he's got to be almost pinpoint with it. He can't miss. These guys like Archer and that Lance McCullers Jr. is that's over and it's playable. So two down. But when you get Archer and Lance McCullers that late breaking slider, they don't have to be pinpoint with it. No, McCullers is just a baby. He's 21 years old. Archer's been around a while. Had a couple of decent years the last two years serving notice that eventually he was going to grow into probably a top of the rotation starter. Well and he did that. It happened this year. Yeah that McCullers. Corey Kluber has showed us the best right handed curveball we've seen in a long time. Yep. Yep. And Lance McCullers showed us the best right handed slider we've seen in a long time. Gordon. One hopper. That didn't take long. One, two, three, and after an inning and a half, still one one. Final game five. That matchup starting at 6:30 with Blackhawks pregame live on CSN Plus. 
Then after the game, flip over to CSN Chicago for player and coach reaction, highlights, and more on Blackhawks postgame live. Hawks, Lightning, Game 5 coverage starts tonight at 6.30 on CSN+. Plus. Oh, that's going to be some game. It, can you recall the last time there was this much buildup for Game 5? No. Me either. Can't because everybody is saying the same thing. The winner of this game wins the series. Doesn't necessarily have to be true, but that's right. what everybody's saying. Uh-oh. Stays with it, makes a catch. Here's the morning skate. Something that I always love to do. Except I think I'd fire a few pucks at Coach Q. So here's Elmore. Well, being from growing up in Savannah, Georgia, we didn't skate too much. There wasn't too many pucks to fire? No. And then when I was playing with the Red Sox, Bobby Orr and Derek Sanderson would take me out to the garden Shoot occasionally, pucks and we would <laughs> skate. I could skate, but I couldn't stop. And so what they would do was That's they would good. get me going full bore, and then we'd get to the ball, and they'd both part and I'd go face first right into that thing. Now the question is, is he still in the box? And it was answered by Dale Scott, who said yes, indeed he was. Yeah, that's a drawback if you know how to skate, especially if you know how to skate quickly, but you can't stop. I couldn't stop, and I could skate quickly. And then they'd come out, but I'd get them back because they'd come out <laughs> to Fenway sometimes early, and we'd I throw them BP. And every now and one would slip, you know. <laughs> Bobby could hit that baseball. He he took a few up in that that net to green over the green monster. He gone. Two down. Yeah, I had that. My son Casey come over from Orlando yesterday, and he brought my Blackhawk jersey, one that John McDonough had made up for me with Hawk 40 on the back. And I wore it last night. We were down in the hotel. And you should have seen all of the Blackhawk jerseys. It was amazing. There's a few of them at the ballpark today. Oh, yeah. And last night. Here's a guy that just might be taking in a double header. This one, and then the one a half hour from here at the Amelie Arena. Nice pitch right there. And a little easy one, two, three inning as Franklin grounds out to Sanchez.
guarantee game seven, but we can guarantee game six. And they're going to give you a chance to win tickets to game six of the Stanley Cup final. So enter for your chance to win now at CSNChicago.com slash game six. The winner will be selected Monday at noon, and that's CSNChicago.com slash game six. Here's Carlos Sanchez. Takes first pitch strike, and as soon as this game is over, we get back to the hotel. I will have my Blackhawks jersey on. That's fouled away. And a no two count. As you can see, you can get that fastball up to 96, 97 miles an hour. He tried to heat him upstairs, throw it by him inside, but Carlos was able to fight it off. One down. Second strikeout for Chris Archer. He sets you up with 96 upstairs and changes your eye level and goes downstairs with the slider. So that's the strikeout number two. And of course, because he just doesn't want anybody anymore, he's got none of those. So here's Soto. Takes first pitch strike. Jill hitting a 223 homers. He's driven in 10. Judo had a big home run. Put us on top two to one in that last game against Houston. First pitch off Tony Silk. You can put it on the board. There's a two hopper, Longoria. Sox fans come out for specialty beer night on Thursday, June 18th. Sample up to 16 different beers and ciders with this $42 ticket package, which includes access to the tasting area from 5:40 to 7:30, and a lower box seat is included. To purchase, visit whitesocks.com/specialty. There's our leadoff hitter tonight, J.B. Shuck. And he pops it up. Cabrera. So this is seven in a row retired now by Archer. And we're tied at one.
take on the Rangers. The White Sox are offering specially priced tickets to all Indiana residents, their family, and their friends. To purchase tickets, visit WhiteSox.com slash NWI Sox fans. It's the bottom of the third inning in this 1 1 tie. Kurt Casale. Kurt. The head release. Bobby Wilson, who was their backup catcher. So they only had one. It took a gamble last night with Rene Rivera. Well, I had Jake and yeah. Wings, Elmore, first baseman. <laughs> yeah. He he was the happiest guy that Rivera actually made it through the game. And Casali's 26 years old. He had a brief stint last year, hitting in the ones. But he's up here because he can catch it, call it, throw it, and block it. And they're hoping he does it as well as Bobby Wilson, who did a terrific job. But they needed a pitcher in a hurry. Now Casali, they can swing the bat a little bit. He's 277 career minor league hitter, which is not bad for being 26 years old. Yeah, you're right. Bobby Wilson, he can catch it. He can. And he can throw it. There's a chopper two hopper. So here's Kiermaier. As I mentioned last night, he'd been sitting on the bench. All of a sudden, he pinch hit in the sixth, knocked in a run with a single. Then he singled in the eighth. And tonight, he let off the bottom of the first with a triple. So he's three for three in this series. Back underneath us. They really like Kiermaier down here. They love his center field play. He's very quick. He's a good base stealer. And he's shown at least the last couple of games like he hits a lot of line drives. We got one inside. The only problem here is that when a guy gets hit, if he's a good base stealer, he will try to steal a base. And this one gets him in the thigh and then hits off his left ankle. So it's a twofer. Got him twice. It's only the second time he's been hit this year. So here is Butler who struck out. Kiermaier with a good lead. Not a huge lead, but a good lead. He has stolen as many as 27 bases in the minor leagues. And as you can see, five for six here, including one of those last night coming in the eighth inning. That's shanked foul.
Yes, he did. Now Skeeter Barnes, who is their outfield and base running coordinator, said that four years ago, Kiermaier was already the best outfielder in the whole organization. He's certainly shown that. He made a terrific catch a couple days ago. Saw it in the highlights. Kiermaier out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Briefly made it to the big leagues in 2013 with Texas, had only 12 at bats. Then briefly, with just five at bats, with St. Louis last year before getting his opportunity here. And now making the most of it. Payoff pitch. There goes Kimmer. And that ball hit well into right center field. And he can't get it. And there's a break because yep. Kiermaier would have scored easily. And even on this artificial surface, which isn't near the liveliest around, it bounces out of the ballpark. So for the moment, it saves a run. A big break for us. And Kiermaier able to pick it up, and this is a slider that stays in the middle of the plate. Well, it's a big break also because first base is open with this guy at the plate, so you don't have to. If you're walking, fine. Try to make a very good pitch on it. Angoria knocked in the run. Kiermaier back in the first inning. There's a strike. Right at the bottom of the zone. I was not going to say anything, but he probably feels that one was a touch low. And with their decimated lineup leaving David DeJesus as the protection behind Longoria, you would have to believe he's going to get a lot more walks these days. Kiermaier, who was hit by a pitch, scores and it's 2 1. RBI number 28 and the second of the day, not only for the Rays, but for Longoria. Well, that's just a smart hitter. Enfield's back. They're conceding the run, just make, make some contact, do anything but pop it up. That's what he was all, he just didn't want to turn the head of the bat over. And here's the Jesus who walked back in the first inning. Two runs on three hits, no errors for their guys. If you're just tuning in, a run on two hits, no errors for our guys. Ray with an RBI single in the first. And that is back and souvenir.
Just did get a piece of it. Finale here tomorrow afternoon. Chris Sale against Nathan Carnes. That game will be over WGN. Then it's off to Pittsburgh. For a quick two game set. And then back home with Pittsburgh for two games. That's in the center field. That's can of corn. But Kiermaier scores again, and they lead it two to one. Money presented by Coors Light. Watch fans test their sports trivia knowledge as they try to win big. It's airing at 7 p.m. on Comcast Sportsnet. Alexei deleted off. He singled and scored in the first inning. And looks like. Mr. Archer is starting to fall into a rhythm. He's getting 0 2 on our guys in a hurry. After that, Abreu base hit, a double play ground ball, and nothing else of the young man. Two and two the count, so Adrian Gonzalez was upset with an umpire. <laughs> Got ejected from the game and was talking about after the game how the umpire had more or less said, You better swing the bat. And that's a bad thing to say to a guy in the midst of a discussion or an argument. And in the midst of a pennant race. Yeah, coming from a guy like Adrian Gonzalez, you'd have to think that he was probably right. <laughs> so here is Abreu. RBI single. Alexi single went to second on a wild pitch. Most of those days are, are gone. There's a situation that players today really just don't have a, so to speak, quote, quote, working relationship with, with umpires. We used to have. We had, when you play, not play, we had a relationship with umpires. We only had, and in those times, obviously you have an American League and National League umpire. Now you have Major League umpires, and because it was broken down by leagues. You get to know them a whole lot better. Yeah. There's another base hit. 
So the one out single. Yeah, we might get hot at them or whatever the situation called for, but overall you had respect for them, and they knew that. They would tell you though. They would tell you. You'd be walking up to plate in the eighth or ninth inning and score is nine to two or ten to one. Hawk, oh, better swing the bat. It's getting close to the cocktail hour. Yeah. Or getaway day. Yeah. That's when you had all commercial flights <laughs> and they had schedules to make. <laughs> but you understood it. That's foul back. Our impending rain, let me tell you, swing the bat. We're going to get five in. One out, one on, and the one one pitch. He would certainly want to keep that fastball up to Adam LaRoche. Did get him to hit the ball awfully hard, but right into a double play to end that first inning. Adam's not going to hit a 94, 95, 96 mile an hour fastball. Nope. He's not. There's the way to do it. Get it down, and he did. And there is a single. We threw him a slider, and after throwing a fastball by him, that slider was just shot the opposite way. Tries to keep it out of way. He did keep it out of way. It's actually a pretty decent pitch, but not in a defensive mode, and that's exactly what Adam was. Yeah, if you're heading to count one and two, that is just a more mental mistake. So here is Avi struck out on that slider. Good check. Takes it down low. Archer thought he might have been able to make that play, then thought better of it because of a cams off the glove or his hand. It's going to be an infield hit. He had a pretty good idea where as Drupal was and decided to stay away from it, and maybe it could be two, but it was not hit with a whole lot on it. No, I thought he was going to make the play when it left the bat. So here's Melky fouled out to Longoria. Come on, Melky, we need you right here, buddy. Let's get this thing tied up. And he will. So Abreu scores. He has knocked in one, scored one, and we're tied at two. Melky took this ball out of way. It was 85. It looks like a straight change, and he just shoots it over the head of Cabrera. Melky's 21st driven in. And a brand new game. And Archer really upset with himself. Don't stop now, boys. Come on, Gordon. Gordon grounded down to his counterpart, Longoria. 
And he takes ball one. Mike Mazza and all the boys and girls. They're picked to click. Blake. Checks it up and takes a another ball. Two and oh. Pulled off that one just enough. And Blue Jays win their tenth straight game. Russell Martin's go ahead homer in the 11th to beat the Red Sox 5 4. Those guys can hit. They can really hit up and down that lineup. Good rip underneath it, but the count two and two with two on, two out, one in, tied at two. Yeah, that's that's one deal there that I have a lot of trouble, as they say, getting my head around. Josh Donaldson. Pretty amazing because it really set up that Toronto lineup. Not that they weren't deep anyway, but they're a lot deeper now. That just made it. Could not lay off of it. And that'll retire the side, but Melky Cabrera's RBI single, we're tied at two. And it is Chris Colabello in his recently completed 18 game hit streak that lasted between the 20th of May and the 8th of June. He had 338, three home runs, drove in 14 runs while scoring 11. So that was the longest streak and is the longest streak in the American League this year. And Colabello, pretty much picked off the scrap heap, has turned into quite a fine for Alex Anthopoulos. Well, everything is contagious in baseball. You put it. You put a guy who's struggling a little bit, or has some talent but has not produced. You put him in a lineup like that. It makes it a lot easier, a lot easier to break in, so to speak. Well, he certainly didn't have to be close to the man. He had to be a man because you've got Batista, you have Encarnacion, you have Donaldson in the middle of that order. You just have to be along for the ride. I. I just can't see. I don't know what if they if they catch the baseball, if Toronto catches, I just can't see anybody beating that club in that division. Well, I would think one of the keys also would be Reyes staying healthy at the top. Well, he that's, scores that's a lot a of big runs. If. Yeah, it's true. He go. <laughs> 
Jeff starts him off with a couple of fastballs and wipes him out with that slider. Sees it down on strikes. So here's as Drupal went out to JB Shuck in center field. About it and read about it. Adam Eaton. And they closed door meeting with coaches, manager, Venice frustrations on being benched for the second time in three games. That ball deep in the right field. But right, we got a man there on the track. Well, Suck has had pretty good numbers against Chris Archer. But that being said, Adam last night did have a couple of hits and scored two runs. And if something's bothering you, it's best to get it out in the open. See, that's not, let it that linger. doesn't bother me one bit when a player does that. But if they do it the right way. Close the door. Don't do it in front of the other players. Don't do it in the dugout. Don't do it. Until you get in his office. That's high into left field, so this is going to be a very quick one, two, three inning for Jeff. And we are still tied at two. Orioles on Friday, July 3rd at 7:10. Be sure to stay for the post-game fireworks show presented by Shark Week, which starts Sunday, July 5th on Discovery. To purchase tickets, visit whitesocks.com promos. Here's Carlos. Sanchez struck out swinging his first turn. And Chris Archer just continues to throw strikes. What was that stat you were giving earlier? Of the first guy in the modern era to what? Go three games with 10 plus strikeouts in each and no walks in any of them. Still hasn't walked anybody. But he's not close to the 10 he needs at this point. However, one streak did end for him. He had a 
Speak of 23 straight innings with at least one strikeout. And that came to rest in the first inning. As a ground out, a couple of singles and a double play ground ball ended the inning without a strikeout. And a little soft chopper, two hop. One out. Here's Gio. So it all grounded out to Longoria. Now, when a player has something like that, but of course today it's it's hard to it's hard to keep anything in house. <laughs> Lots of media around all the time. Just tuning in, both teams with a run in the first. They scored one in the third. We scored another one in the fourth. To tie it at two. And here's the 0-2 pitch. He did not go. Says Dan Ayasonia. Infield, which has been very good for these Rays, playing Geo as a pull hitter. He did pull the ball the first time up, but he pulled it right at Longoria. And there you see Cabrera and Longoria very close to one another on the left side. Shuck on deck. Two and two. Bottom of the fourth in Detroit, two one Tigers over Cleveland. Top of the fourth in St. Louis, Kansas City, and the Cardinals tied at two. Bottom of the fourth in Texas, 4 3 Rangers over Minnesota. Two down. This is his hard slider at 89, and he doesn't really come close to it. Late breaking, when he keeps it there. You're not going to do much with it, especially if you're even contemplating pulling the ball, which means that left shoulder flies open. You get no coverage on the outside part of the plate. That 89 mile an hour slider is more like a big breaking cut basket. Yeah, it's it's a dandy. But he's given up a couple of runs today and five hits. Count even at one. Right on the corner at the knees. One and two. The best part of the arsenal of Chris Archer is the fact that he can not only throw that. Good late breaking slider, but he can move it to either side of the plate, which is very unusual for a young pitcher. And Chris is still a pretty young pitcher. Pass Drupal. Comes in, makes his own hop, gets him, and we're halfway home in this 2 2 tie.
as Nick Franklin will lead it off switch hitting infielder shortstop last night second base this evening or this afternoon. He's 0 for 1 he grounded out to Sanchez. Years ago, we saw Nick Franklin in that Seattle uniform, and boy, was he impressive. When he first came up, it looked like he was going to get the ball out of the park consistently, which is tough to do in that ballpark. That was before they moved the fences in. There's a rocket foul, thank you. And last night, he came in hitting 102, got on base three times with a double, drove home a run with a single, reached base on an air. And his leadoff walk in the third inning wound up scoring. Well, when he was with Seattle, when we first saw him, he was one of the best looking young infield prospects in the league. High. Long way to go. And can't get there. You know, we're getting back to Toronto. In this league, I don't know about the National League. Toronto's got the only team that can possibly get their way to postseason with mediocre pitching. Well, they've got a lineup that up and down the lineup is just scary. Reyes, Donaldson, Batista, Encarnacion, Calabella, who's hitting everything in sight. Then they added Russell Martin. That extends the lineup out. Jazz got a piece of that one. I think all things considered. These guys can really bash the ball. It's hard to hit your way to some postseason, but they might be the only team that can do that. Justin Smoke has been swinging the bat well for him. Again, when you're in a lineup like that, it's contagious. He gone. Franklin fouled off a couple. And then he threw a fastball right by him on the outside corner, just above the knees. Here's Kurt Casale, the catcher, granted out to Sanchez. Most of the time, what happens though? In a situation like that, when you get a good looking young player with a good resume, good credentials coming to the big leagues, and all of a sudden he's hitting the ball well, looking like a million bucks, and then things start to decline, as a rule, not always, but as a rule, what happens is the guy changes his thought process, either from a pitching coach or whatever, a uh, hitting coach rather, and they move their thoughts from the plate back. And when you're thinking from the plate back, Against a major league pitcher, you're probably going to go for four. And what that means is, if you're thinking from the plate back, you're thinking mechanics. And if you're thinking mechanics, you can't hit the big leagues. You've got to be thinking from the plate forward. And that means no mechanics approach. That's low on the way. That'll let your thought dictate your mechanics, not your mechanics dictate your thoughts. Just off the corner. Full count. Him right on the outside edge of the outside corner. Gio called the fastball away and Jeff threw it right to the glove. You see where he sets up? Can't do much with that pitch. And it's just a perfect pitch. So take a seat. And you too take a seat. And 
this guy. No, all he is is four for four. In this series. And he scored both runs. This is another pretty good pitch. This ball is low and away, and he's able to yank it in the hole on the right side. Normally, you figure with that pitch, which was an off speeder, he'd be trying to take it to left center field, but not so this time. So here's Butler. A strikeout and a ground rule double in the right center field. Down low. We'll see now what's on the mind of Kevin Cash if he does want to send them because you don't see a lot of 1 0 pitch outs. Broken bat. Butler. Everything he's hitting is either a base hit. He had three of them last night. He got two of them today. He breaks the bat on a fastball on the inside part of the plate. Able to just ease it by Sanchez. And that brings Don Cooper out from the bench. He wants a word with Jeff Samarja and how they want to deal with Longoria, who's been up twice and driven in the two runs. White Sox fans join us on Friday June 19th for mullet night presented by great clips mullet night features haircuts and mullet wigs for purchase and to support Ronald McDonald House charities. You also get a post game fireworks show great clips. It's going to be great to purchase tickets visit White Sox .com slash group. Two of Butler's hits last night were real soft. One of them was a duck snort. And then that one this evening. So here is Longoria. One for two with the two ribbies. Now has 28. The Jesus on deck. Count two and zero. Totals on the board identical at two five and zero. Oh. There's a strike. For Longoria, that was a good pitch to hit. I think he was fooled by the velocity because. Yeah. Low and in, if it was a fastball, he'd probably be hacking. And also, he, he knows they're probably going around him. So, three and one. Pitch. I think Longoria outdumbed himself right there. Meanwhile, we'll take it and we're into the sixth.
Maloney and the Fire take the field in search of a much needed win against the New England Revolution. Coverage begins tonight at 6 on CSN Plus. Ramirez, Abreu, and LaRoche. Time to try to get to their talented young right hander with the meat of the order. Now to play right side. You know, it's like talking about out dumbing yourself. I remember a game in Cleveland a long time ago when Manny Ramirez was red hot. He was just, it was a four game series we had there. And he had beaten us two out of the first three games. He was hitting everything in sight. And we get to the final game. He had a man on second and third. And two outs. And I forget who was pitching. He took three straight fastballs right down the middle. Never swung the bat. Thinking they might be pitching around him. Exactly. That's exactly what Longoria thought. Yeah. Exactly. That's out number one. Alexei now one for three. That time he swung at a pitch way off the plate inside. Couldn't get a whole lot on it. Hitting it right to Cabrera. Now Arch is moving around pretty well, working both sides, working up and down, all four quadrants. Take a look at the Toyota pitch tracks, and that ball was a good four inches inside. But when you're around the plate with everything, and he hasn't walked anybody now in the better part of three and a half games, you figure he's going to be around the plate. Here's a Brayu. He is two for two with an RBI and a run scored. Takes first pitch strike. And that's the last thing he was looking for right there was a fastball right down the middle. But that's good. That means you're not thinking mechanics, you're thinking approach. As Drubal's got it. Low throw. Nice pick. By Elmore. Cabrera with a smile on his face because he realized that Elmore saved him a run. He gets under it and a good pick at first base. Number I'm taking his time after those two quick outs. He's one for two. Last time up just shot a single. Through the left side. And that's in the center field. It's going to go real quick. Inning and a seven in a row retire. We go to the bottom of the six. Tied at two. And it's strikeouts authored by Jeff Samarja. He's got six of them. 
and they've come all different ways. Sliders. More sliders. A couple of fastballs. Both looking and swinging. And Jeff struck out the side last inning despite giving up a couple of hits. Line scores identical. 2 5 and 0 for both teams. Six strikeouts now for Jeff as it'll be DeJesus, Souza, and as Drupal Cabrera. David has walked and he has gone out to center field. David, a two seventy seven lifetime. Nice career. I had a caught a break there as the Jesus is letting Dale Scott know that he thought that ball was up and out of the zone. An athlete is defined by the desire to be active and continue doing the things you love. Visit Athletico.com and start defining your pain-free inner athlete today. Athletico, the official physical therapy provider of the Chicago White Sox. Athletico, better for everybody. So here's Steven Souza. He's 0 for 2, a fielder's choice on a strikeout. Two down. And even though Avi was right there, Carlos yelled definitively, I've got it, and he made the catch. Be like a Volkswagen hitting a semi. Yeah, that wouldn't be a good outcome for Carlos, I don't think. No. Cabrera has gone out to center and he's going out to right. Only hitting a 208 coming in with a couple of homers, 13 RBIs, but they say he has been throwing some leather for him, and that is the first prerequisite to having a winning team catching a baseball. But with the Indians, they felt that he was losing some range at shortstop. But here, because they radically shift on a whole lot of hitters, putting him in a position that they feel the ball's going to go. He's actually been in the way of just about everything at shortstop and done a great job for them. Oh, he just ate him up. Just ate him up. And a quick one, two, three inning. And we're into the seventh.
Patio tickets are all inclusive with purchase. You receive a game ticket. And you can enjoy an all you can eat buffet catered by baseball buffet, as well as wine and Miller and Pepsi beverages. Patio opens 90 minutes prior to the game and closes 30 minutes after the start of the game. To purchase tickets, visit whitesox.com slash group. Top of the seventh inning in this 2 2 tie, it'll be Bobby, Melky, and Gordon. Garcia, 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a 6 4 fielder's choice. I lay off of it. Good pitch. Fastball right underneath the hands. And a count very quickly 0 and 2. He has had a lot of 0 2 counts on our guys. Normally he has as good a control as just about anybody in the league. You don't see many guys come in after. This is his 14th start. After 13 starts with a whip under one. No, and that shows you how good the control is because you're going to give up. If you're a good pitcher, I mean a really good pitcher, you'll give up about seven hits per nine innings, and that's a really good pitcher. So you figure it's got to be one and a half walks a game when you're under one, which he is with the seven hits, and in his case, probably one walk a game. And pretty magnificent overall. 20 walks, and now. 88 innings. Melky, little flare out there. Cabrera's got him, and very quickly two gone. Well, Melky now one for three with an RBI, an RBI single in the fourth, tying up the ball game. So here's Gordon. Gordon 0 for two. First pitch strike. Top of the fifth in Detroit. 3 1 Tigers over Cleveland. After five in St. Louis. 3 2 Cardinals over Kansas City. Texas thumping Minnesota 11 to 3. It's the bottom of the fifth. Right now, not a good time to play the Rangers. They are really heating it up. Along with Toronto, those two offensive clubs are getting it done. One and two. Archer did not have a complete game last year in 32 starts. Doesn't have a complete game this year. So you figure to see somebody else in there, and I think the Sox hitters would welcome that. But it has been a used and well used bullpen as far as the Rays go. Full count. Joy Gallo is homered in that Texas game. That's his third. Moreland hit his eight. If you're not wanting to walk Gordon, you're going to see a fastball here. It was a fastball, but he cut it and moved it away. Yeah, that was about. Six inches short of his best. Yeah, this at 90 on the outside corner. Gordon able to stay alive. Seventh inning stretch tied at two.
home half of the seventh. It'll be Elmore, Franklin, and Casili. Lower third of their order. Be nice to retire him three straight and not have to deal with Kiermeyer and Butler. Between them, they've got four hits and they scored two runs. Well, there's the first one. Jeff has thrown the ball exceptionally well. He had a rough start with a triple and an RBI base hit, but Longoria helped him out by getting thrown out, trying to stretch it into a double. And he had a little rough going in the third inning and given up just two hints since then. Franklin has grounded to second and he has struck out. So far, he has been on top of the slider. And when he does that, he's good. When he gets on the side of it or underneath it, he gets hit hard. This has been a pretty good outing for Jeff. That ball hit deep in the right center field. That's going to be a triple. Franklin's first triple of the season. This an off speed pitch down. It looked like it was going to be a slider. But unfortunately it was over the middle of the plate and knee high. And Franklin just missed hitting it out of the park. But that's the second triple of the afternoon. Now it looks like Casale is going to be called back and Logan Forsythe is getting ready. So Casale taken down now that they have a couple of catchers. Last night they couldn't have made a move like this. But this afternoon with the go ahead run 90 feet away, Logan Forsythe, who started last night's game, he had a run batted in, didn't have a hit, and Don Cooper now. Coming out to have a word with Jeff. Let's take another look at the pitch right here and his hand position on this slider. He doesn't get any depth on it. That one just slid across and with no depth. It wasn't near as deceptive. One of the few mistakes, and he hasn't made money many today. As you can see, he was on the side of it. Now he's got a really bad one. Forth Forsyth comes on at 265. He's only had two pinch hitting opportunities. And he's 0 for 2. But he's driven in 27 with his seven home runs. So he's hit the ball pretty well. And the infield has to come in at all four positions. First pitch strike. Sonia said he did not swing. Didn't appear that he did, and I think they got the call right. Yep, out there in right center. By now, looking either that or the ground ball or the pop up. This is a pretty good slider. This one moving low and away. That did have some depth to it. All right. Oh, he bobbled it. I think after the first bobble, he could have thrown him out at the plate. 
They play the infield in. They get the ground ball that they want. It's a contact play as Franklin was running. And Alexi bobbled it and then chose to go to first. Franklin isn't all that fast. So the bobble here, you still got time, but decides to go to first base and Forsyth drives in his 28th run. Well, we give him three to runs last night. We get beat seven to five, and we give him another run right there, and we trail it three two. So do the math. Triple that was in the first inning, bottom of the first, he scored. He was hit by a pitch with one out, and the third came around to score, and he singled in the fifth. A gift run, and they lead it three to two. White Sox and favorite players all season long by visiting whitesox.com slash connect today. That's whitesox.com slash connect today. Now we gave him another run and they lead it 3 2 here in the top of the eighth inning. And there's Rene Rivera in for Casale. So here's Adam Eaton hitting for Sanchez. Carlos was 0 for 2, a strikeout, and a soft grounder to first. We talked about Eaton and his two base hits and two runs scored last night. And sitting on the bench, you've got to pay close attention to Archer and the fact that. He throws that slider just under 50% of the time. I and why? One and two. This is the first pinch hitting roll that Adam has had all year. And Gillespie on deck to hit for Soto. Boxberger, who is now a setup man, and McGee. Boxberger has 15 saves in Jake McGee's absence. Watch out.
Two and two. It's number 92 coming up, and that's not an overwhelming total into the eighth inning. As you can see, he gets most everything over the plate to the tune of over 70% of the time. Squeeze it. And he did. Ball four. The leadoff walk. That's his first walk in a long time. Almost four whole games worth. That went up and out of the zone. And Archer thought it hit the top of the zone, but did not get the call, and justifiably so from Dale Scott. So here comes Kevin Cash, and it would appear, because he has not completed a game this year, that Cash is ready to go to that pen. He had Fibber up. And a nice, well deserved round of applause. From the fans, the home fans here for Chris Archer. That young man has established himself as truly a number one starter. So he departs. Com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in depth highlights, live look ins, replay previews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. And our Honda call to the pen is Brad Boxberger. He was the closer on his ball club. As you can see, 15 of 16, his record 3 and 3, his ERA respectable, 2 and 3 quarters, 30 strikeouts, and 22 and a third. So here's Gillespie to face the 26, soon to be 27 year old right hander out of Mission Viejo, in California. Good speed at first. And there's first pitch strike to Gillespie. Last year, Boxberger set an all time Ray record with 104 relief strikeouts. That's a pretty good run at. He also has a pretty good changeup to go with that fastball. Yes, pretty quick feet over to first.
Oh and two the count. A lot of room on that left side. And that's foul back to our left. Connor's brother Casey was drafted by these Rays. Did a pretty good job in their minor leagues. They're very, very high on him. Now feel they're deep as they should be. No double set. Big gap out there, though, in right center. There he goes. That ball hit way back. Way back. He looks up. You can put it on the board. Yes. Yes. Two run homer by Connor Gillespie. And the Sox lead it four to three. And for Connor, that's his third home run of the year. He's now driven in 14 of them. None bigger than these two. A Ford home run replay. He got a fastball. It was on the inner portion. And he took it way back. So here is Jamie Shuck takes first pitch strike. Best fastball hitter on this team. And he got one. Did not check it up. And the count 0 and 2. It's interesting, hitting instructors will really work with the guy after he hits the home run. <laughs> You did it just like I told you. You did it really well. <laughs> that's, just, that's just like when you're taking batting practice and they're standing behind the cage and you hit a couple of lines. And that's the way to hit the ball. That's exactly right. That's the way to hit the ball. That's what I told you. Get some hits. Don't stop now, boys. Let's pick up another tally or two. And that is fair ball. So JB is going to beat it out. And that's going to be a base hit for JB. This one goes right down the line. And it's a straight change. And Elmore, who's looked pretty good at first base, barely gets a glove on it. Stops a two base hit, can't stop a base hit. First at 30, Malexi. All started with that leadoff walk, the first walk in a long, many moons by Chris Archer. There's the strike. Didn't run on. For Archer, seven plus innings, three runs on five hits with that lo one lone walk and a five strikeout. It was 107 hitters between walks for Archer. And the walk he did make, leading off the eighth, came back to haunt him. And he'll get a no decision on this, and he's still shaking his head. That young man can pitch. He can that, and he's been very good. And the bullpen continues. 
C.J. Riefenhausen. Watch out. On May 22nd, he walked Marcus Simeon. And didn't walk anybody until he walked Adam Eaton. Yeah, softly into right field. He's coming on, makes a dive. Cannot get it. Good read. Good read by Shaw. Souza did a nice job of almost corralling that one. Can't quite get to it. It's off the end of the bat. It's way up and out of the zone. Would have been a trap anyway had he been able to corral it. So JB taking a look at it. Waiting to see which way to go and then. Moving into second base. That read of his he could have got in there even if he did come up with it on the trap. So two on nobody out and here's a bright you. Took that pitch nicely inside. Jose is two for three with an RBI and a run scored. That was just a get the over breaking ball. And a strike. One and one to count. Foul. And the count moves to one and two. Four eight and oh for us. Three six and oh for them. Here in the top of the eighth inning. Fifth hitter of the inning, the first out of the inning. First baseman, Adam so here's Adam. Adam's one for three. But he's hit the ball hard twice. String on him a little bit and missed. So 2 0. 20,248 in attendance. A lot of those folks have showed up today because there's the country music concert right after the game. First, so two down. <laughs> On the relay, no such luck as Adam beats it by a full step. Big run out there at third, Avi. Uh, he's due. He's 0 for 3 today.
just able to get out of the way of that change up. He's got the catbird seat, two and oh. Three change ups in a row, the third of which hit. Well, if you can fall in love with a pitch and you don't have a hundred mile an hour fastball, that's pretty good pitch to fall in love with. <laughs> if you can keep it in the zone. That's four straight changes. And this one probably the best of all of them because of the location. Two on, two out, two in. Two and two the count. Five straight. Well, if you can throw five straight change ups in the major leagues, you've got to consider yourself the owner. Of a power change, <laughs> a good change, yeah. Maybe James Shields can do that. Not too many other people can. That time he tried to heat him up with a fastball, well out of the zone, and Avi was able to just barely stay alive. Well, that'll make a 91 look more like a 96 or a 97. Got him, but the two run homer by Connor Gillespie will go to the bottom of the eighth leading 4 3. A bunch of new guys in the lineup, including Zach Putnam, who comes on for Jeff Samarja, who did a terrific job today. 
And on for the 22nd time. Zach is one and one as the RA 366 with 30 strikeouts in 19 and two thirds innings. Just eight walks to go with those 30. And he's got to go right through the heart of the Rays order. And the first pitch checks it up, takes a strike. Does Joy Butler, who is two for three, he was three for five last evening. One and one to count. Adam Eaton stays in the game. He's playing center field. Connor Gillespie is two run homer the difference. He stays in at third. Beckham shifts to second. And Tyler Flowers behind the plate. No, Tyler's not behind it. Yes, he is. That's him. We only have two of them. The one way out of scoop. <laughs> Tough to add during the ball game. That's a can of corn out there in the right center field. So a big out, and that'll bring up Longoria. He is one for three with two RBIs in this game. And a much needed good effort by Jeff Smart. Seven innings, three runs on six hits with only one walk and seven strikeouts. Well, he didn't make many mistakes with that slide. No, I thought he did a nice job today. And this is the Jeff Samarja. We would certainly enjoy having most every time out. Evan trying to tie this ball game up. Yeah. Serious intentions on that pitch. And the count 0 and 2. Remains no balls, two strikes. The raise pen has Riefenhauser and McGee. You have to figure if they don't score, it'll be Riefenhauser. If they do take the lead, it'll be McGee. Fibber can get it up there. He showed last night. He not only can get up there at 97, but it seems to have a little added hop on it. Yeah, you don't see many fastballs with that late hop. Especially from right handers. Left handers a little more often than right handers. And last night he faced three in nailing down just his second save after being injured. He struck out two of them in a one, two, three, nine. He gone. Two down. Zach has been very good lately. That one just dipped out of sight. Talk about good late movement. That was an example of it. You can see that tumble on it. Fortunately, Longoria couldn't. So here's the Jesus. A walk, fly out to center, and a ground out to second. He would not bite. Starters pitch well, which we expected. And tomorrow, Chris Sale against Nathan Carnes. Carnes. 
And that game will be over WGN. There he is, David Robertson. Luke's dad. And he should be ready to go to try to nail it down. There's his drive. Well, there's a break, and the Jesus can't believe it. But Dale Scott saw it as a strike before it dipped out of the zone, and he got the benefit of the call. They broke. Don't fix it. Watch now. That keeps the inning alive as he takes it right back up through the middle. Now you're dealing with a guy with some big power. Susan can hit it a long way, although he has not done it yet in this series. Fielder deep, straight up. And he cannot get it. Keeps it in front of him. Just a short lead by the Jesus. And there's a strike. That was a good pitch for Souza. That time he hit. He took one up. Certainly want the splitter to be down. And I think he was surprised with the location. Take a little something off of it right here. There he goes. Only the second stolen base of the year for De Jesus. He's now two out of four. Figuring that they were going to see the splitter and see it down. Take a good pitch to run. That's part of base stealing. Your smart base stealers steal a lot of bases just on that thought, yep. picking the right pitch. Just got a piece of it. Well, I'm not sure how he got any of that, but he hit the top seam of the ball as that ball was diving out of the zone. And Souza was able to stay alive. That ball was diving out of the zone. Montoyo, third base coaches in a danger zone. Strong right handed hitter. The 
Well, so far, Zach has left one pitch that was dangerously up. The rest have been down and out of the zone, and Souza's fouled him off. Now if he takes a little something more, takes a foot off this one, he's probably going to get it. Now, too much time. Another good job of staying alive. That ball was way down and out of the zone. Somehow he's able to just again get the very top of the baseball. Hit. Here's a throw, not in time, and this game is tied at four. That'll be at number 29 for Souza. This was a great battle, and unfortunately, Souza won it. And he went down and got one again, diving out of the zone and drove it through the left side. Just like that. It's a tie game. And Jeff Samarja cannot win this one. Here's Asdrubal Cabrera. Fly out to center, fly out to right, and a pop up to second. Jake Patricia throwing in the pen. Two out, nobody on. A single, a stolen base, and a single. You got to be very careful with Souza at first base. He's a big man, but he's got pretty good speed. He swiped seven, been caught four times. Got a decent lead. Totals on the board identical at four, eight, and oh. There he goes. Boy, I think that his leg got in there, and I think he wants the appeal. Now we'll have to see if, in fact, Kevin Cash wants an umpire appeal because he's already used. He's, he's out of challenges, so he can ask for an umpire appeal. Watch it from this angle. Looks like he's safe fairly easily at second base, but we'll have to see what comes of it. Watch the front leg. From the last angle, it appears that the leg was on the bag before the tag, but we'll have to hope that that's not the case because that's a go ahead run, and Susan wants it immediately checked. Now, once again, the fans see it up on the scoreboard, and indeed, it's the same shot that you just saw. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it looks He's like safe. the foot was in, but we've seen stranger things happen on the appellate process. 
Now he's on the bag before the tag. But again, it's got to be definitive proof. And let's see if that was it or not. This a huge call. So we score two in the eighth to take a 4 3 lead. They come right back with two out, nobody on. Base hit by De Jesus. Stolen base by De Jesus and a single by Souza. And we're tied at four. They're still checking it out in New York. In the meantime, once again, a reminder tomorrow Chris Sale on the bump for us, Nate Carnes. Nathan Carnes, big 27 year old right hander for them. And that game will be over WGN. That's one of the reasons why this game is so big, is because they sent their ace to the mound today and Chris Archer. You wind up winning this game and you figure Chris Sale is going to spin another gem tomorrow and you can win the series. Looks like Sousa is asking Adam Eaton if he thought he was safe. Adam says, nah, you know what? I just don't think so. And obviously the center fielder has the best angle, so you can understand why he'd be asking him. Well, the longer it goes, the better it is for us. Yeah, I would think the longer it goes, the more you can make a case for a non-definitive yeah. proposition. Well, they have two cameras here that they have angles that we don't have. And they'll be. And they have them in every ballpark. Well, it took a long time, and in the end, we believe they got it right. That being said, it's tough to find too much definitive proof, but it looks like that's the definitive proof. And now the intentional walk. Three minutes and 13 seconds. Is they're going to put. Cabrera on. Jake Elmore. Elmore has struck out, going out to left, and popped up the second. And Mark Perrin comes out. And he wants Jake Patrichka. So as Jake strolls in, we'll step out and be back after these messages.
one is ERA 366 on for the 24th time. 14 walks, 19 and two thirds. He's been called on to save one game and he saved it. So he's only allowed one home run. But the game is on the bases. It's a tie ball game. He inherits Rays at first and second. And looking in at Elmore. So two on two out. And he takes ball one. Short. And the count two and oh. Nick Franklin on deck. There's a strike. Right at the top of the zone. Close pitch didn't get it. Amor is ready to pull the trigger, but the last instant checks it and the ball dives out of the zone. There's a chopper up the middle. Lexi throws it away and uh, the run will score. And we trail it 5 4. That throw well wide of the bag. And you'd have to think he's got a real good chance. Base hit E6. Unless he gets to it, but the flip to second goes awry. Well, we gave him three runs. Last night to lose a seven to five, we've given them two runs so far in this game. And it is a base hit, and it is E6, says Souza. Rounded third, the ball got away, scored easily. These are things that can't happen to you if you're going to make any sustained run. Here's Franklin. Grounder to second, a strikeout, and a triple. So they come up with a pair. Another gift run, the second gift run of this ball game, and we trail it. 5-4.
Here's our Miller moment, and it's not a pleasant one. This ball back up the middle. Lexi's able to get to it, but the ill-fated toss into the middle of the infield. Souza scores. At this point, what is the go-ahead run? And a very dejected Alexi Ramirez. Not having one of his better games. And that does bring Jake McGee into the game. Picked up the save last night. He's back at it again here today on for the 12th time. 270 ERA, but 16 strikeouts in 10 innings, including two in the ninth yesterday and a 1 2 3 ninth that yielded his second save. So here is Melky Cabrera. Thanks a lot. Takes a strike. Melky one for three with an RBI. This game last night and this game today and also last night's shades of April. You can't do this. I mean, you know, this is a good ball club. Should be a contending ball club in September. And you just keep throwing away games. No, it don't work. It does not work. Defense will do more to deflate a ball club, bad defense, than anything. Well, this Tampa Bay team is a great example of it. You look at their lineup, and aside from Longoria, nobody really jumps out at you. Yet they're a game out of first place because in the infield and the outfield, consistently, they catch the ball. You're telling me this ball club here can't hit with Toronto? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can if Toronto, <laughs> let's see, who would they hit? Oh, this is. This is now it's uh, it's Man. not good today but two outs to go and a guy throwing bullets on the mound and throwing them where he wants them. Three game series against Houston, we played outstanding defense. Gordon, 0 for 3, and the 2 1 pitch. It's 3 and 1, don't help him out. Had a meeting in the on deck circle. He came on with a key walk last inning. And a two run homer by Gillespie in the pinch. And all was beautiful at that point. And that is a good way to get a one out rally going. And here's Adam. He pinch hit last inning and let off of the walk and came around and scored ahead of the two run homer by Connor Gillespie. First and third in. Adam takes first pitch strike. Adam did face McGee last night. Lined out to left field to end the ball game. But at least he had a look at him. At least he knows how the fastball moves. And there's a little loop, and that's going to fall for a base hit. So two on, one out. A little previous knowledge gives Adam a much better look at McGee. He got a fastball on the inner portion of the plate, able to just loop it into left field. So the tying and go ahead runs on base. 
And Bonifacio is going to hit for Gillespie, who pinch hit last inning and hit that two run homer. Emilio, a switch hitter. Getting a look from the right side. Takes it right on the inside corner. Today, for whatever reason, McGee is not throwing as hard as he did last night. Last night, he was consistently 97. This afternoon, he's had more 93s than we've seen from him in a long time. Well, you don't have to look at the numbers to see it. Nope. It's a little less lively here this afternoon. Let's see if the boys can take advantage of it. That one almost the same spot as strike one. So one and two to count. That time he got 96 and threw it right by Emilio. So he reached back, put another three spot on the velocity, and threw it by him upstairs. And here's Tyler. This Making is his first plate appearance. One time. Got a good pitch to hit. Couldn't do anything with it. Two on, two out. Well, we gave them last night's game. We gave them three runs. They beat us seven to five. Today, we give them two runs. And they beat us five to four. Well, unfortunately, it's a game that our Sox let slip away. They had it. They would have beaten them. Game started by their best. It didn't work out that way. So it's up to Chris Sale tomorrow to pick up one win. It's up to our defense. It's up to our defense to make some plays and catch the ball. Let's make the routine plays. Nothing spectacular. Just make the routine plays. That's all. Now let's check out our player of the game. It is Chris Archer. 26.